What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Google Pixel 9 tips, tricks, and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. So these are my favorite tips and tricks and hidden features for the Google Pixel 9. Now this device was recently launched and it is the latest and greatest of course from Google so, so we're getting a lot of good stuff built in here. Now the first thing I want to show you is how to get a battery percentage in the upper right corner here on the Google Pixel 9. Now by default we do get a battery indicator here but it doesn't show us the exact battery percentage so let me show you how to do that. So all you have to do is pull down the shade, go to the gear icon for the settings, go to search, type in battery and then go to battery percentage and then enable it right there. And then from there, you'll now see that we do indeed have a percentage in the upper right corner. And you can see this from anywhere throughout the operating system. So that's definitely very nice. And for me at least, I definitely prefer having that. Now heading back over here to the battery menu, there are quite a few other good things here. Now the first one is, you might not be aware of this, but it's called battery share. So basically you can actually share the battery on this device with another device. Now that device does have to be compatible with wireless charging, so maybe you want to charge your headphones for example, but basically just enable battery share and then put the device on the back of the phone and then the Pixel 9 will then recharge that device. Now if you're concerned about it draining your phone's battery completely, you can have it stop sharing battery when it reaches a certain percentage. Then from here there's another option, it's called battery saver. So battery saver is great if you know that you have a long day ahead of you and you're not going to recharge your phone anytime soon. By enabling Battery Saver, it's going to cut out a lot of various background tasks, but in return for that, you're going to be getting much better battery life here on the phone. You can also see that it did switch the phone to dark theme as well. Now in addition to that, there's also Extreme Battery Saver. So it includes everything of the standard battery saver, except it's also going to pause non-essential apps and their notifications. Now you can go over here to the settings for that, and then further customize Extreme Battery Saver. You can add various third-party applications and other apps to your essential apps so that they're not cut out in this process. And if you want to, schedule and reminders are available for this as well. So if you know that you're typically activating Battery Saver at a certain time of day, you can have that happen. You can also have the phone remind you to enable Battery Saver if it's at a certain level. So a lot of good stuff here. Now with the Google Pixel 9, we're getting an excellent looking OLED display. But one of my favorite things about this display is that it does feature a 120Hz refresh rate. The only downside though is that that refresh rate is not enabled by default. So by default, the phone is actually going to run at 60Hz, which is really surprising that's the default setting, considering that that's a great feature to have. So to switch over to 120Hz, all you have to do is go back to the settings, and then from there, go down to where it says display, and then you'll see it right down here, smooth display. So once you enable that, you can go back to the home screen here, and then you can see that the phone runs much smoother. It's honestly a really noticeable difference, and it really makes the phone feel a lot faster and higher end. There's a lot of other good stuff too in this display settings area. For example, you can change the screen timeout time. So I did set it to 30 minutes because I've been making a lot of videos about this phone. You can also set it so that the phone doesn't actually screen time out if you're actually looking at the phone. You can even go to dark theme right here, and if you want to, you can even set a schedule for dark theme. You can also have dark theme activate on sunset and then turn off on sunrise. You can change the display size and text. You can also change the colors of the display, and many other things here as well. Now another important one here is navigation mode. Now by default, the phone is going to be giving us gesture-based navigation, which I definitely like. But basically, if you swipe partially up, it'll take you to recent apps. If you swipe from the side, it'll take you back and then swiping up will take you home. So pretty self-explanatory, pretty intuitive, but I know there's a lot of people that still prefer the traditional Android three button navigation. So you can go over to here, navigation mode, you can switch it over to that if you want to. And then now you'll see the familiar buttons here. So we have the back button, home button, and recent apps buttons. So I don't think there's really a right or wrong answer on which navigation method is the best. It really comes down to your own personal preference. The next thing I wanna do is show you how to take a screenshot with the Google Pixel 9. Now there's actually two different methods to take a screenshot here with the device, so let me show you how to do that. So the first way to take a screenshot here with the phone is to simply hold the volume down and power button for about a second, and you can see we took the screenshot, then from there you can share it or edit it, and then the second way to take a screenshot involves the recent apps page. So basically go to your recent apps, you have to pick a certain app here, but then I'm going to take a screenshot of this app right here, I'm going to tap on screenshot, and then from there it does actually capture the screenshot. So that's pretty cool. 
And then finally, down here, you'll see where it says select. If you tap on that, you can actually select text within the actual app that's up on here. And then from there, you can copy, share, or search. Now, speaking of search, the next feature I wanna show you is called Circle to Search. Now, this feature was launched last year, and since then, it's been really popular. But to get to this feature, just hold down on the navigation bar. And then from there, simply circle what you wanna search up. And then from there, it'll search it. So you can see it did identify the car in this photo, and it is a self-driving car. Now pulling down the shade here, you can see we have a lot of quick toggles, but we have tons of options here. You can put the phone do not disturb, you can set an alarm, airplane mode, wallet, flashlight, lots of different options here. However, if you wanna to go to this pen tool, you can further edit this. So the first thing is you can change the order of what's here, but then there's actually other additional options down here, such as hotspot, dark theme, color inversion, battery share. So if you find yourself using any of these pretty often, you can take any of them and then drag them into here and then go back and then they'll now be up here in this quick toggle panel. The next thing I want to show you is that if you're looking for a quick and easy way to get to the camera app here on the device, all you have to do is just double press on the power button and then from there it pulls up the camera. And by the way, if you hold down on the power button, it's going to pull up Gemini. Now heading back over to the settings, there's an entire secret menu with tons of different options here. And I wanna show you that right now. Go all the way down to where it says system. Then from there, you'll see gestures and that's where all these features are. So go to gestures. And some of these are enabled already by default, but others are not. So there's quite a few options here and I'll walk you through them all right now. So the first one here is quick tap to start actions. So basically if you tap on the back of the phone, kind of like that, you can then access various options here. And you can see all the various options. You can also have it open up any app of your choosing, which is pretty cool. So there's that option, but heading back over to here, you can see you can also have it do other things like show your notifications, see recent apps, play pause media. So for this example, I'm actually gonna go and pick the calculator app, and then we'll go back here. And then now I'll double tap on the back of the phone and there we go, it pulled up the calculator. Now I already showed you quickly open camera. There's also flip camera for selfie. So when you're in the camera app, just double twist your wrist. So we'll try that right now. And there we go, there's me right there. Now tap to check phone is already enabled. Basically what that means is that if you just tap, it'll then pull up the lock screen here. We can also go over here to one-handed mode. So with this device, we have a very large display at 6.3 inches, and it can be hard to reach all portions of the display. So by enabling one-handed mode, from here, all you have to do is simply pull down, and then it pulls down the whole operating system. Then from here, I can reach all parts of it, and then I can tap outside of here to bring things back to normal. And if you wanted to show your notifications instead, that's also an option. So I'll try that, and there we go. I'll try that again, and it pulls down my notifications. There's one other option here as well. Basically, it's one-handed mode shortcut. So if you enable that, you have a little shortcut here on the side, and then by tapping on that shortcut, it'll do the same exact thing. You can also put the phone in Do Not Disturb by flipping it. So right here, we'll enable that. And then now putting the phone face flat, we'll then put it on Do Not Disturb, and then picking it up again, we'll take it out of it. And then the final feature I wanna highlight here is called Add Me. So with Add Me, photographer number one takes a photo of you, and then you take a photo of the other person, and then the device will merge those two images together. But I hope you enjoyed my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Google Pixel 9. Now, of course, there are many other features to this phone, which I can't fit all of it here in this video, but I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new today. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one. So take care and have a great rest of your day.